Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to use a web page that I created for computing the wheel size to enter into just about any bike computer you might have, especially if you lost the manual or you have a wheel size that your bike computer manual does not cover. So to get to this web page, you would go to berkshiresports.org. That's my website. You would, on the left-hand side here, click on the menu and bicycling and choose bike computer tire size calculator and that'll get you to my little calculator. Now say you had a bike with 27 and a half inch wheels. Most bike computer manuals don't have this listed because that's a new wheel size. And say you had uh, 2.1 inch tires. The number you would enter into your computer most likely would be 2170 millimeters for the circumference of your wheel. If your computer wants centimeters instead of millimeters, which most want millimeters, you would enter 217. If they wanted inches, which I don't know any bike computer that does, you would enter that. And if they wanted miles per hour, which some of the older Sigma bike computers want, you would enter that number. Now. That's going to be approximate because how hard you have your tires inflated will affect the diameter of the wheel. If you have them very soft, as many mountain bikers do, your wheel size is going to be a little lower. If you have them really hard, it might be more accurate. But if you have narrow rims, it can affect the, the size as opposed to wide rims. So you can take that number in. I'll show you how to get a better, more accurate uh, reading to use in a second. But first, if your tire size is not listed in my dropdown or your wheel size is not listed in my dropdown, what you can do is say you had a 30 inch wheel size. You know, maybe they went from 29ers to 30 inchers. Let me know about it and I will. Put it in my drop down but what you could do is take that number and put it into this inches to millimeter calculator and come up with 762 and you could plug that in here for the diameter of the wheel and override what, what was filled in by the drop down and then that'll give you a new number 212729 so that is how that works there is another way if you have your manual and say you had a 2.1 inch tire and a 2.3 inch tire and they gave you a setting of 1000 and 1000 and 2000 and you wanted to know what a 2.2 inch tire should be set at it would be halfway between these two numbers or 1500 so let's do an example maybe and let's try if you had a seven, if their manual said 700 by 20 C is 2114, what you'd enter in here is the 20. And here, yeah, it's doing some checks, but 2114. And then over here, I want to go to 25, 2146, 25. Yeah, 2146, and say we want to know what a 23 was. It will come up with 2133. Let's see if that's what Sigma has. 2133, right there. So that is using linear interpolation. If you had, say, the 23 and the 2133, and you had a 25, this will do linear extrapolation and come up with 2146 for the 25, which is right. Now, the further apart these numbers are, the more likely you'll have a difference between what my computer calculates and yours. But So if you had a manual that had some of the wheel sizes but not your particular one, you could use this one. You could also do a rollout test or in your basement or against the wall or whatever where you try to measure one revolution of your wheel and use that number 
I have tried that and found it to be extremely difficult. Now, say you calculated your wheel size using my first one, uh, and say we go back to the 27 and a half inch wheel and 2.1 inch, and we come up with 2170. Okay, so 2170 is the number it thinks we would have. Now, if I plug that in there, and then I actually go ride a measured mile on the road, and then say my computer read 1.1, that would tell me that number was too high, and I should really use 1973, not 2170 for my wheel size to put into the computer. So that's one way you could do that. And this will take into effect your the air pressure in your wheel, how heavy you are, how straight you ride, everything like that. So this can give you a much more accurate number to put in there so that you will match the mile markers on the road pretty closely. So that's how to use this calculator. I hope it's of use to some of you. Thanks for watching.